get this going, but this time it seems that everything is ready and the first home map is gonna be Oasis which seems to be the home map for GDMs and they are gonna be playing with Bako, X Platinum and LC that's gonna be double Oranos and Ra and for Dots we are looking at Chelte, Brighead and Fox so basically the big guns the best players that their team and clan has to offer right about now and they're gonna be playing Oranos, Thor and Isis so pretty good triple and trio and let's see how it's gonna be doing against GDMs which are also pretty decent pretty decent And it seems to be having a bit of a connection problem in there as well. Let's see if it's gonna be right about now starting or not. This is definitely not looking great, so it's almost looking like that somebody is gonna be dropped as we start into the game. But maybe not, let's see. Hopefully it's not gonna be some kind of sign of things to come. <laughs> like some kind of brutal leg or whatnot. As we are right now starting with the first game of the second match of today that is going to be streamed live and it's between Gladiadores del Mythology and Deities of Death A. So we are already looking right about now at Black Bako who is going to be starting on... What is he actually? He's in the pocket. Yeah, it's. I was just a bit confused in there because he's always quite far away from him so he definitely won't be happy about that all that much. You can see he's very far away. Basically they are like starting in the corners. So he's going to be having a lot of fun with Brighead. So Elsit and Brighead is going to be quite a good matchup between them, between the Oranos and of course Brighead who is playing right about now the Thor in here. All are having, all are having quite decent amount of berries absolutely everywhere and he's also having pretty decent gold. It's nicely positioned behind of course the tower and also protected by the wood line on the left so that's very good for him. But where is he having the hunt? On the right he has already discovered all the zebras. So that's useful for him, as otherwise he will have to scout around a bit and he already did see, yes, he did see all those giraffes in there, so that's very nice for him. And really, this is gonna be a very hard game for Elsit. I'm expecting Brighead to steamroll him quite fine and quite fast. So let's see if that's gonna happen or not, because I'm not entirely certain he's gonna be receiving any kind of assistance soon. And right now I'm just basically fishing for any kind of hunt for him and whatnot. So he's probably having uh, the zebras either here or they're gonna be here. I'm not entirely certain, where are they actually? They they have to be here. They kind of have to be here. Let's see if the goat is going to be discovering them or not. Well, apparently not. So where are they? The last place could be here. So this will be definitely unfortunate if they didn't spawn for him. If they didn't spawn for him at all. Because there are giraffes absolutely everywhere. So potentially could be moving even here. But I'm fairly surprised that we don't see still the zebras. Not entirely certain where they are going to be hidden, of course, as we are looking at teal. Also going for the berries. And it's almost looking like that actually this is... This is just a bit of luck right about now on Brighead. These are actually not starting zebras, I'm thinking. Hmm, they are very far away. So potentially for Fox as well. And for the last player, for Dodds, Shelty, he is actually right now on Berry, so he hasn't discovered the zebras as well, or rather either. So basically all the players are having them quite far away, so that's at least quite fair in that regard. But otherwise it's going to be just apparently two Dodds getting the extra hunting dogs at the start. Otherwise it's going to be berries and just waiting for the extra population of the animals to be found a bit later through the scouting like for example right now for ex-platinum who has discovered the front giraffes and well he definitely knows where to go next and these are gonna be the next zebras that he's gonna be of course eaten for his team otherwise of course a bit of scouting on the left by Elsid who is already looking where potentially he could be raiding his opponent even though I'm not entirely certain that's really gonna be happening all that much I'm really fully expecting especially through the fast start that Brighead should be having through all the zebras in there, that he's really gonna be pushing on the yellow player quite soon. And I'm really not certain that Bako is gonna be helping him fast enough, because he's going to be playing Ra. And that means that, of course, it's gonna be also resulting into faster heroic from him. We are gonna see if it's gonna be 2TC or not. And, of course, with the 2TCs, it could probably, probably be a bit slower, which is definitely gonna be playing into Brighead's hand. In the meantime, of course, Shelty already dropped in a temple as we are at 3 minutes, so it's gonna be about 4 minute advance, having just enough goats right about now. And otherwise, of course... <laughs> uh, well, for example, let's check some of the relics in here. Villager is gonna be here. That's, of course, quite good for the economy. Another relic is gonna be on the left side. That is for 10% villagers farming rate. And of course somewhere else, I'm not entirely certain, but yeah, just right now, need to do a bit. I 
as we are also getting some first relic for Bako who is capturing one of them at the bottom and he's gonna be getting a bit of food trickle it's not really all that really important all that majorly important but of course any kind of resource is gonna be all right and if the game well the longer the game actually goes the more resources he's of course gonna be getting and of course that is gonna be quite a good help for him so prometheus is in four minutes how's it looking actually for brigade he's just now getting up which is interestingly slow i was really expecting that he might be really advancing quite fast because he did have he did have the zebras in there and he also had the giraffe so maybe he's right now aiming for something a bit different maybe some kind of faster heroic or maybe even some i don't know fast ragnarok could be but definitely well he didn't know that his opponent is actually all this low on all the food and whatnot so yeah that's that uh, 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 all that all that and as we are also looking at shelter just now scouting a bit around and killing all the oracles that he can actually find from platinum because of course platinum is quite intent on somehow scouting him so this is very nice right right play um, sorry nicely played by shelter right about now because he's getting rid of all the eyes that his opponent could be having around him as he himself is also scouting his opponent quite well having all of those hidden and let's see if x platinum is gonna be doing the same in there Hmm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's gonna be 1-1. One, 1-4-1 one. One one in there, as we are also looking at the wall coming up. So this is, oh man, this is really unexpected. I was really expecting that the Teeth of Death could be really pushing for it quite aggressively from the very start, especially from Brighead. But this is definitely looking like that he is preparing for defense, and he might be really getting ready for some fast Dragon Rock. Because this is highly unusual to be basically walling this soon and not really being ready for any kind of assault at five and a half minutes already because he just advanced about five minutes. So that's quite fine. As in here, Shelty is definitely gonna be attacking because there's no reason why Oranos shouldn't. Oranos' strongest age is quite easily the classical with the Turmas and whatnot, especially in competent hands. And Shelty is definitely a competent player. So let's see if it's gonna be a bit more competent than X Platinum. But since X Platinum is actually a pretty good player himself, I'm not all that certain that Chelsea will be having that significant upper hand. So this should be a very good matchup in here. And I'm still waiting what's gonna happen on the left. Because Yellow so far not really all that active, just having a bit of scouting through the Promethean. And with the troll, as apparently that's gonna be back TC being captured by Fox, who is just going for 3 TC boom. Oh well, somebody's greedy in that. So it's gonna be 3 TC Isis from Fox, as on the other hand, we are looking at Ra, so far apparently coming for one TC boom and faster heroic from him, so it seems to be, yeah, quite standard on his part. Otherwise, of course, still not really any kind of attack on the left, right about now, I'm thinking that Elsie should be getting worried, like what's going on, where is actually Brighead, where is anybody in my base, <laughs> when he's already advancing on this opponent quite late-ish. So it's fairly surprising, but very nicely build up a defense in here for a big head. And of course, he's gonna be just all around getting all the food. And I'm really right now betting on some kind of fast Ragnarok from him. It's really looking like that because he's not investing into anything at all. He's just basically letting Shelty have a, have a bit of fight on the right against X Platinum, as they are having quite a good one. Yeah, it seems like the Shelty. Well, I don't really want to call him like basically winning because he's having just Turmas, whereas his opponent is basically having both. Murmilos and especially he's having Promethean so if he can somehow single out the hero Turmas it's gonna be quite a bit difficult army to deal with for Shelty so he kind of needs to be careful about that uh, but since we are looking at Fox already sending at least the Anubite in here that is gonna be quite a good help as yet again his opponent also doesn't have all that many heroes in his army but then there is already knocking on the door by El Cid a second TC is being captured by Brighead just basically confirming that he's gonna be booming basically similarly to his Aegis teammate. And of course... And of course there is gonna be right now bre breach through the walls and I'm not entirely certain if Brighead is actually fully ready for this. He's gonna be able to defend quite fine, he has the tower so it's not really any kind of issue for him. But building the longhouse here and not really finishing with it definitely shows that he was surprised that he's gonna be under such a heavy attack so maybe he just basically a bit underestimated his opponents which is not a good idea as on the right you can see that Chelty is also not having any kind of convincing push and advantage above X Platinum but of course we are just right now waiting for Fox to get into comfortable zone and he should be already getting into heroic cage not yet but segment is coming up for Bako as Fox is getting the blow for all the economy that he can get and well right now he's also though going to be under attack as Chelty is gonna be ready Beating back and getting a second TC as well and it seems like that his opponent is not yet doing the same so a bit of a fun on the gold 
And actually, pretty important timing. I'm thinking now, of no, prospect is already off. I just hasn't, haven't noticed it a bit. Of, sorry, a bit before, as it really wasn't all that apparent in there. And I'm gonna try to speak a bit slower, as I'm <laughs> definitely catching myself a bit there, and I'm also reading in the chat in there. So I'm gonna try to speak a bit slower, so that it is a bit easier for you to understand and whatnot. Hopefully, it wasn't really that bad up until now, but apparently it was bad enough, so that you can <laughs> notice. So yellow is quite all over, all over the place right about now with Brighead. He's finally getting some army in there as he's having the two long houses, but still, he's right now subjecting his ally to quite a difficult situation on the gold. He definitely right now needs to respond even with a bit of monument because he doesn't want to be surprised by some kind of god powers. And here we go with shifting signs. Oh, oh man, we're actually looking at Scarabrush. Now that's interesting, Scarabrush with Plague of Serpents that is gonna be helping from Isis of course, from Fox. This is actually fun, <laughs> from GDM, definitely nice to see us Anubite is dying in there. A few villages are being targeted here and there and the Scarabs are definitely not dying. Definitely not dying, which means that TC is dying. So TC gone. And that's already gonna be Migdol being built. By Bako, this is nicely played by GDM, especially considering that on the left, Elsit is taking a TC for himself. <laughs> for himself, as right now Red is trying to help across the map. But he should be basically keeping plenty of army in his base as well. Because right about now, GDMs are doing what they can to somehow keep this. Uh, actually keep this somehow alive. And, well, this was a nice idea, very nice idea, definitely worked out for GDMs, but they right now need to be taking care of all of those towers, as they just are dying in huge numbers, you can see, one, two, three, four, about five citizens already dead right about now for Shelty. Six, six citizens already dead, he lost the TC, this Migdol, well, it's probably gonna be finished, it's gonna be taken a bit, as those scarabs are making their way there, but of course the army is already getting ready. Especially from Fox, but he's also getting in with some villagers. He's gonna be trying to take the TC, it seems like. They don't have any ceasefire because, of course, they don't have a Zeus. So, yeah, that's about that. And, so of course, right now, it's gonna be all up to Fox. Literally all up to Fox, because if Fox can somehow stabilize the situation, which he has basically the best way to do. Oh, that was just one extra hit into where I've been gone. Bit of a shame, because Fox does have right now the best economy in the game without any kind of question. But Bako is not really that far behind, because he's booming very well, as there are already getting some market going and whatnot. Interestingly though, not going for second TC season and such. Which leaves basically just Elsie with the second TC, Exploiting also getting the second as well. Yellow is getting all hit the way into the red's base. And is actually red getting ready for advance or not? Not entirely certain. They are still all in classical, just Bako is in the hero cage. Hmm. And no upgrades are actually coming up, that's interesting. Just copper shields right about now from here. I was maybe for a bit thinking that there could be attempt at hero cage from Big Head, but it definitely isn't. As those guys are just not doing a whole lot, and we're gonna be switching back to the main battlefield on the right. As on the left, it doesn't look that LCD is gonna be having any kind of luck, and so it's actually not gonna be Brighead in there, because he is not really moving anywhere outside of the perimeter of his own base in there in the defense. Anyway, in here it seems to be quite nicely, quite nicely con conquered by GDMs. So Gladiadores are definitely owning this part of the map. And it's just gonna be basically waiting for those villages to capture the TC as well. Help Bako have the second TC, maybe potentially a bit more in there as he's still just at one and not even capturing anything else. And well, this is a pitch battle right here as the Slingers are gonna be a backbone of the army because they are quite good against those Sumas. But of course, they are not really that great against all the camelry being supplied by the Migdol. And of course, this is really well played. And those two heroic, <laughs> definitely heroic Scarab are still owning the game quite all right and they are just basically right now waiting for this DC to come into their power as well and already dots are retreating from this position as they are recognizing that they are not gonna be able to hold this and well Fox it's gonna be up to you quite strongly as there is a pretty significant raid pretty significant raid right about now on Brighead's gold with all those Truma skidding of course the ox card but right about now he needs to retreat because Brighead was paying attention and he is on top of that. So that's that for him, as otherwise he's attempting to raid a bit around. As of course, the settlement is gonna be kind of... Well, it's not like actually Elsit needs it all that much, he's taking this back TC. So he's not really needing it all that much, as other, otherwise on the right they are still pushing forward. Bako, I'm still kind of curious why he wasn't taking the second PC, but right now he just did. The back one, if you look at the minimap, 
not even going, going to be moving there, as Purple is having such a big army right about now, even though it's basically all Durmas, so it's not that difficult to actually amass, it's something that Shelty was having as well. Shelty is in a very tough situation, he has lost another citizen in there, and how many citizens does he actually have? Don't tell me he has two citizens. Oh no, yes, he having a bit more, but of course, yeah, this is gonna be toast. Those scarabs are still alive. Oh, come on. They, they need one hit. Yes. <laughs> They're gonna die for it. But still, they did their job. They killed both TCs right about now. And Shelter is down to zero. And he's also having significant issue because he hasn't retreated with the citizens. Oh, man. He lost another two. And right now, he's gonna be down to really those two, I think. So he's having two citizens. Yes, he is. He's really having two citizens right about now, so we can be considering Shelty as yeah, a bit of an extra observer in this map right about now. Extra DC is being captured by Platinum all across the map, he's gonna be at 4 pretty soon, as on the left of course right now LCT is doing what he can to push forward and really playing quite well indeed in here. Keeping Brighead in check, but I'm really mm -hmm, expecting that Brighead could be coming into Heroic through the Bragi in there and really still this game is not over yet. Even though you might be thinking that without Shelty they are kinda screwed, it also means that Fox was having quite a good boom and he is definitely skilled enough player to somehow make it count. And if Shelty can survive with those two villages and not get defeated altogether, he could be, well, in about half an hour maybe <laughs> coming back into the game. And let's see if it's gonna be really coming that long, because it could. But I don't really see that much, all that much, to be honest. There's definitely a pretty good chance for GDM to somehow close it soon. Because that's gonna be a bit of an issue with the flaming weapons when they're gonna be coming in. That's gonna be a bit hard for LC to actually stand. And that's the reason why he needs to somehow stabilize the position a bit better. Very nice catch by Brighead, killing the villager and getting rid of the TC for the moment. But of course, he also needs to take care of all the army inside his base. Because if he doesn't, then even the flaming weapons are not gonna help him. Alright, so army is coming in. Let's see how fast actually flamey wep flame weapons are gonna be cast. But I'm thinking not really all that much. He doesn't have all that much of an army and he doesn't need it. He doesn't really need it. He just needs to wait for a bit of boars and whatnot. But Elsid getting into Heroic Cage at the same time, that's very important because it means that of course he's not gonna be having any kind of disadvantage in the power spike in there. So very well played as Bako is coming for fourth TC and going for a bit of radium with the Chemos. Yeah, if only he knew how close he is actually to Fox's villages. Yeah, that would be a whole lot better for him, but it might be really that he's gonna be discovering them very soon indeed, as this doesn't look all that great right now, as Platinum and Bako are advancing ever forward, and right now getting exactly on Fox in here. So this really looks like the Dots might have underestimated the situation a bit. They went for... I'm not entirely certain what they went for. Shelty was playing alright, Fox was booming very hard, maybe too hard, and Brighead... I'm not sure what his plan was. I'm thinking he thought that the game is gonna be easy and he could be getting some faster Ragnarok. It almost looked like that he's coming for something like that, but just didn't work out at all. And he was just too slow and LC took the advantage, went on with a lot of raiding and then of course the very nice plan from GDM just completely caught him off guard. Completely caught them off guard. Well, right now they are pushing forward, of course, they're probably not going to, sorry, not going to be having any kind of upgrades. Well, actually Explosinum is already having the baseline coming in, as Shelty is still in the game with Turmas. Well, he's not gonna be having any upgrades, of course. And some, of course, guys are gonna be coming forward with Heroic Cage coming up, and Ancestors are gonna be cast exactly here, because this is a pretty difficult situation, and even the mercenaries are kinda not enough to help with this. So Chaos cast on the left side at the same time, as the boar is gonna be this <laughs> right now a bit difficult. Yeah, it's gonna be killing not only the tower, but potentially even a few extra units in there. Very nicely cast Chaos by Elsit at 40 CCs already, as he finished with the one on the left that he was raided on a bit before. And of course, that's gonna be meaning 4 versus 2. And you can see the GDMs are all 3 at 40 CCs, with Fox being 3, Brigade 2, and Shalty, the big fat 0. Hmm, okay, so even a few satyrs may be made, but this is of course the one that he got for free, so not really that much of an advantage on build up for him, Mythical Age for Brickhead, with the baseline of upgrades and Ragnarok is up. And that is Ragnarok with how many units? 81, okay, it seems to be basically Pop Ragnarok, so it seems alright. Well, it's not gonna be full pop, you can see there are some caravans, so about maybe 60 to 70. Maybe, maybe a bit more to the top side, 70 villages in there, so 70 heroes of Ragnarok. 
So of course that still could be making some kind of difference, especially with the flamey weapons, as the opponents don't have any kind of counter god power. Else it is right now in the mythic as well. Very nicely played. So Tata Gate is probably gonna be cast on down soon as well. Uh, so of course flame weapons are being cast and to deny the palace a bit too slow, which is gonna result in well quite a lot of extra damage, which is gonna help Elsid, but without upgrades, he's having just medium Murmelos. Baseline of upgrades is not bad, but still. Well, opponent is having all bronze. That's much better. So right now, pretty tough times coming for you, as you are gonna be losing the TCs. Fortified, no masons unfortunately, so he could have had a bit more easier time in there. But of course, you also mustn't forget on the battlefield, rather, you mustn't forget the battlefield on the right side, where still Platinum with Bako are doing what they can to push forward, but they're not successful. It has to be said, they are not very successful so far. As even though this is not even fortified TC by Fox, so he's not even having all the population limit that he could be getting extra reinforcements through the stronghold. Nice idea. But the palaces by the opponents are quite close by, so this is always gonna be very hard to deal with. As Son of Osiris is gonna be coming in, and where is actually the Pharaoh? Ah, right here. And he's gonna be just around the corner to join the battle. In the meantime, on the left, they are moving forward as the heroes of Ragnarok are facing. Well, it's plenty of towers and plenty of absolutely everything in here, so I don't think they are gonna be in enough numbers to even take down this TC at this point. If it's played correctly by Elsid, he needs to be repairing already, he needs to be also killing them as soon as possible, because there's just too much fire from absolutely everywhere. Come on, villagers, repair, please! This could have been... this might have been safe with a bit of luck. Not that is certain, but maybe could have. But also we mustn't forget that Fox has lost the TC in the front, as this one is also lost, because all those destroyers that we have seen that a bit before are nicely upgraded into bronze bronze in there, and that is a significant issue of course for Dots, who are definitely not in any kind of great spot, with yellow of course casting Tartarian Gate a bit before at the back, that is being dealt with with another Heroes of Ragnarok. But as soon as all those Heroes of Ragnarok are toastish, then it's gonna be meaning huge problems number two for Deities of Death, because of course, yeah, it's not, not gonna be all that much of an economy left for Brigitte, I'm thinking, because he's gonna be under attack soon as well. At the same time though, he's doing what he can to somehow stabilize himself, getting another TC in the front, it's gonna be three for him, which is nicely played, as if he can basically restart this economy fast enough, then, then, well, of course, even he could be surviving un or rather after the heroes of Ragnarok, because so far he still has enough numbers of them. Is he somehow popped? He's not even popped, so right about now he's having good army and he can already restart the economy and he still has the resources in there. So potentially could be working for him and the switch into the fire giants is gonna be working for him and well it's gonna be up to Elsid to somehow survive this very difficult situation which is always gonna be hard but at the same time on the right the push by Platinum and Bako is getting really kinda scary. Well, it got scary about... Uh, about 15 minutes ago almost, <laughs> well no, about 12, <laughs> 12 minutes ago it already got pretty scary with the scarabs and it's right now continuing and those, oh well, heavy destroyers already nicely upgraded, getting the copper weapons also in there, even the fortified DC getting repaired with the masons on top of them is not really seem to be not, it's not really seeming to be exactly enough, but the Pharaoh, if he gets there in time and doesn't get killed, which he will, yeah, very nice reaction right now by Platinum, exactly as soon as he saw it, he just killed him, he is definitely looking like this TC might be falling, and I'm kind of thinking that once it does, it might be just a GG in there, because I don't exactly see how folks could be holding this any longer without mercenaries, but he might be just at the nick of time actually saving it, you can see 400 hit points, 400 hit points from getting destroyed. Oh well, and the destroyers are just not in enough numbers, and this is gonna be a fail push right about now for GDM, so very nicely played by the of Death, very nicely played indeed. Just at the nick of time, the very nice clutch, and it was a lot of resources actually right about now wasted for GDMs. Of course the catapult is gonna be another story, probably not gonna be able to shoot from here. But still, he's gonna be killing the military buildings, then the Migdol and whatnot, and he's gonna be in deck quite soon in the business. Anyway, there's already gonna be a bit of help, apparently by Bako on the left, as he's having enough population limit for all of it. And of course the Lampades and all the all the units in here are gonna be helping getting rid of the heroes of Ragnarok, but at the same time, of course, the TCs are coming up for Brighead. He's already at 4, and you can see the economy going up. With the TCs not really that strong as I would be expecting, maybe he just forgot to queue in at there, because in the other TCs he's making the villages. 
So I definitely don't right now want to underestimate it Big Head, underestimate Big Head. And if they can somehow still keep this DC alive, this is gonna be all about this DC. Because I'm really thinking if this DC falls, it's gonna be it for the game. But if they can keep it alive and make uh, GDMs basically waste plenty of resources in that, which right now didn't happen, as the DC is down, it's gonna be getting very difficult for Fox to deal with this, because Big Head is still having plenty of fun on the left side with the yellow player and a bit, of course, with the teal. Who is already having heavy axemen with baseline of upgrades. Maybe could be upgrading a bit more with so many TCs and the strong economy. But of course, the mythical age from Platinum with, of course, the Vortex is gonna be yet another, yet another problem for them. And that's why Dots are right now gonna be tapping out. And the surprising strategy that caught the deities of that totally off guard with the two Scarabs, they stayed alive for quite a long time. That usually doesn't happen. Well, that really paid off. And I'm really, I can't really shake the feeling that Deities of Death thought this is gonna be an easier game for them. Not really easy, but easier. And they wait for, went for Heavy Boom, Fast Ragnarok by Brighead maybe. Yeah, not ideal. GDMs are not a team to underestimate. They have proven that time and again in the past RTS League. So let's see. Let's see how the second game is gonna go. I'm fully expecting that dots are gonna be playing differently and they won't underestimate anything again. And in that case, I'm expecting that they should be the favorites. Well, they are favorites coming into this match, but of course we have been proven we have been proven wrong. As we are right now coming into the post game in here. And well, X Platinum. High score, he was having a good game against Shelty, has to be said. And then Bako, well joined at the right time, and they were able to hold it quite fine. I really think that the biggest problem in this game wasn't really the right side, but rather the left. They just Big Head didn't have any presence in there, and he basically let Elsie do whatever he wanted. And he just basically raided around, was annoying to Fox. Well, not sure. Anyway. Everybody in the chat can have their opinion, of course, on that as well, so feel free to post them what you think was actually the reason why the game went as it went, even against some supposed supposed ideas, as I need to quickly check this out because I need to go out of the...